Hey everybody, this is Rantalicious, and I am going to be telling you the truth about marijuana, or cannabis is the correct term for it. Uh, this is gathered from many, many months of research uh, on university websites and books and whatnot, and I think you'll like it. So, here it is. This is uh, some myths and facts about cannabis. So, here is the first question here. The first myth. Marijuana can cause permanent mental illness. Well, there is no convincing scientific evidence that marijuana causes psychological damage or mental illness in either teenagers or adults. Some marijuana users experience psychological distress following marijuana ingestion which may include feelings of panic, anxiety, and paranoia. Such experiences can be frightening, but the effects are temporary. With very large doses, marijuana can cause temporary toxic psychosis. This occurs rarely, and almost always when marijuana is eaten rather than smoked. Marijuana does not cause profound changes in people's behavior. And another myth here, marijuana is highly addictive. Long-term marijuana users experience physical dependence and withdrawal, and often need professional drug treatment to break their marijuana habits. Well, most people who smoke marijuana smoke it only occasionally. A small minority of Americans, less than 1%, smoke marijuana on a daily basis. An even smaller minority develop a dependence on marijuana. Some people who smoke marijuana heavily and frequently stop without difficulty. Others seek help from drug treatment professionals. Marijuana does not cause physical dependence. If people experience withdrawal symptoms at all, they are remarkably mild. Here's another myth. Marijuana is more potent today than in the past. Adults who used marijuana in the 1960s and 1970s fail to realize that when today's youth use marijuana, they're using a much more dangerous drug. Well, when today's youth use marijuana, they're using the same drug used by youth in the 1960s and the 1970s. A small number of low THC samples seized by the Drug Enforcement Administration are used to calculate a dramatic increase in potency. However, these samples were not representative of the marijuana generally available to users during this era. Potency data from the early 1980s to the present are more reliable and they show no increase in the average THC content of marijuana. Even if marijuana potency were to increase, it would not necessarily make the drug more dangerous. Marijuana that varies quite substantially in potency produces similar psychoactive effects. Here's one. Marijuana offenses are not severely punished. Well, marijuana arrests in the United States doubled between 1991 and 1995. <laughs> In 1995, more than half, one half million people were arrested for marijuana offenses. 86% of them were arrested for marijuana possession. Tens of thousands of people are now imprisoned for marijuana offenses. An even greater number are punished with probation, fines, and civil sanctions, including having their property seized, their driver's license revoked, and their employment terminated. Despite these civil and criminal sanctions, marijuana continues to be readily available and widely used. Marijuana is more damaging to the lungs than tobacco. No, a moderate smoking of marijuana appears to pose minimal danger to the lungs. Uh, like tobacco smoke, marijuana smoke contains a number of irritants and carcinogens, but marijuana users typically smoke much less often than tobacco users, and over time, inhale much less smoke. As a result, the risk of serious lung damage should be lower in marijuana smokers. There have been no reports of lung cancer related solely to marijuana, and in a large study presented to the American Thoracic Society in 2006, even heavy users of smoked marijuana were found not to have any increased risk of lung cancer, unlike heavy tobacco smokers. Heavy marijuana smokers exhibit no obstruction of the lungs' small airway. That indicates that people will not develop emphysema from smoking marijuana. Another myth, marijuana has no medicinal value. Well, marijuana has been shown to be effective in reducing the nausea induced by cancer chemotherapy, stimulating appetite in AIDS patients, and reducing intraocular pressure in people with glaucoma. 
There's also appreciable evidence that marijuana reduces muscle spasticity in patients with neurological disorders. A synthetic capsule is available by prescription, but it is not as effective as smoked marijuana for many patients. Pure THC may also produce more unpleasant psychoactive side effects than smoked marijuana. Many people use marijuana as a medicine today. Here's one that they really try to push. Marijuana is a gateway drug. <laughs> no, marijuana does not cause people to use hard drugs. What the gateway theory presents as a casual explanation is a statistic association between common and uncommon drugs, an association that changes over time as different drugs increase and decrease in prevalence. Marijuana is the most popular illegal drug in the United States today. Therefore, people who have used less popular drugs such as heroin, cocaine, and LSD are likely to have also used marijuana. Most marijuana users never use any other illegal drug. Indeed, for the large majority of people, marijuana is a terminus rather than a gateway drug. Here's a myth. Marijuana's harms have been proved scientifically. In 1972, after reviewing the scientific evidence, the National Commission on Marijuana and Drug Abuse concluded that while marijuana was not entirely safe, its dangers had been grossly overstated. Since then, researchers have conducted Thousands of studies of humans, animals, and cell creatures. None reveal any findings dramatically different from those described by the National Commission in 1972. In 1995, based on 30 years of scientific research, editors of the British me medical journal Lancet included that the smoking of cannabis, even long term, is not harmful to health. And here's the big one. Marijuana kills brain cells. None of that medical tests currently used to detect brain damage in humans have found harm from marijuana, even from long-term high-dose use. An early study reported brain damage in rhesus monkeys after six months exposure to high concentrations of marijuana smoke. In a recent, more carefully conducted study, researchers found no evidence of brain abnormality in monkeys that were forced to inhale the equivalent of four to five marijuana cigarettes every day for a year. The claim that marijuana kills brain cells is based on a speculative report dating back a quarter of a century that has never been supported in any scientific studies. Marijuana impairs memory and cognition. Marijuana produces immediate, temporary changes in thoughts, perceptions, and information processing. The cognitive process most clearly affected by marijuana is short-term memory. In laboratory studies, subjects under the influence of marijuana have no trouble remembering things they learned previously. However, they display diminished capacity to learn and recall new information. This diminishment only lasts for the duration of the intoxication. There is no convincing evidence that heavy, long-term marijuana use permanently impairs memory or other cognitive functions. Another myth, marijuana causes crime. Well, every serious scholar and government commission examining the relationship between marijuana use and crime has reached the same conclusion. Marijuana does not cause crime. The vast majority of marijuana us users do not commit crimes other than the crime of possessing marijuana. Among marijuana users who do, not, who do commit crimes, marijuana plays no casual role. Almost all human and animal studies showed that marijuana decreases rather than increases aggression. Here's a biggie right here. Marijuana use during pregnancy damages the fetus. Studies of newborns, infants, and children showed no consistent physical development or cognitive deficits related to prenatal marijuana exposure. Marijuana had no reliable impact on birth size, length of gestation, neurological development, or the occurrence of physical abnormalities. The administration of hundreds of tests to older children has revealed only minor differences between offspring of marijuana users and non-users, and some are positive rather than negative. Two unconfirmed case control studies identified prenatal marijuana exposure as one of the many factors statistically associated with childhood cancer. Given other available evidence, it is highly unlikely that marijuana causes cancer in children. Marijuana use impairs the immune system. 
No, there is no evidence that marijuana users are more susceptible to infections than non-users, nor is there evidence that marijuana lowers users' resistance to sexually transmitted diseases. Early studies which showed decreased immune functions in cells taken from marijuana users have since been disproved. Animals given extremely large doses of TSC and exposed to a virus have higher rates of infection. Such studies have little relevance to humans. Even among people with existing immune disorders, such as AIDS, marijuana use appears to be relatively safe. However, the recent findings of an association between tobacco smoking and lung infections in AIDS patients warrants further research into possible harm from marijuana smoking in immune-suppressed persons. Here's one. Marijuana use is a major cause of highway accidents. Well, there is no compelling evidence that marijuana contributes substantially to traffic accidents and fatalities. At some doses, marijuana affects perception and psychomotor performances, changes which can impair driving ability. However, in driving studies, marijuana produces little or no car handling impairment, consistently less than produced by low, moderate doses of alcohol and many legal medications. In contrast to alcohol, which tends to increase risky driving practices, marijuana tends to make subjects more cautious. Surveys of fatally injured drivers showed that when THC is detected in the blood, alcohol is most always detected as well. For some individuals, a marijuana may play a role in bad driving. The overall rate of highway accidents appears not to be significantly affected by marijuana's widespread use in society. Here's another big one. Marijuana-related hospital emergencies are increasing, particularly among youth. Marijuana does not cause overdose deaths. The number of people in hospital emergencies rooms who say they have used marijuana has increased. On this basis, the visit may be recorded as marijuana-related even if marijuana had nothing to do with the medical condition preceding the hospital visit. Many more teenagers use marijuana than use drugs such as heroin and cocaine. As a result, when teenagers visit hospital emergency rooms, they reported marijuana much more frequently than they report heroin and cocaine. In a large majority of cases, when marijuana is mentioned, other drugs are mentioned as well. In 1994, fewer than 2% of drug-related emergency room visits involved the use of marijuana. And that is all for this fun fact and myth, uh, whatever you want to call it here. Uh, it's going to take forever to upload, but yeah, I thought I'd give you what I've learned, and hopefully you'll put it to use. And like uh, Peter Tosh said, legalize it.